Shalom, and thank you for listening to sermons from Tikvot Israel, a Messianic synagogue in the heart of Richmond, Virginia. Listening to the podcast is great, but we would love to meet you in person. All are welcome, and that includes you. So if you want the full experience, please join us Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. for our worship service at the corner of Arthur Ashe Boulevard and Grove in the historic synagogue across from the Art Museum. Can't make it in person? No problem. We are also live streaming on YouTube. Contact our administrator at tikvotdirector at gmail.com for the link during the week or contact us on our website, tikvotisrael.com. There, you can also support the ministry, learn more about Messianic Judaism, and find helpful resources. May Hashem bless you through the hearing of His Word. I wanted to talk about getting older and how much time do we have left. Only God knows the length of our days, right? We all know our physical bodies will not last forever. Not long ago, Bonnie and I were at one of our favorite Chinese restaurants, and I opened my fortune cookie. Now I know what you're thinking. Eric, do you really believe in fortunes and fortune cookies? Only if they're made in Brooklyn. Well, not really, but this little piece of paper was very interesting. It said, live for the moment because there is only one result in life. I was very surprised, and this took me back to when I was 22 years old. My father, who had turned out to have terminal cancer, said to me, live your life for today because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. He passed not long after that when he was only 50 years old. For the next 20 years or so, I thought I knew what living life to the fullest was about. Well, it cost me two bad marriages, a whole lot of financial issues, a loss of advancement in my Navy career, and a broken relationship with my only daughter. Yep. I was really living, folks. I was really living. I believe there was two main reasons for these occurrences. Bad choices and no God in my life. So this evening on my 66th journey around the sun, I want to encourage people to choose life and to live life to its fullest. I did a little research about where in the scriptures does it say the phrase, choose life, and I found one place. We read it a couple of weeks ago in the Parsha Nitzavim, in Deuteronomy 30, 18 to 20, where Moses said to the children of Israel, I declare to you today that you will certainly perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and take possession of it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have placed before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God by obeying his voice, and by holding close to him. For this is your life and the length of your days, so that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So as we enter Yom Kippur, how do we choose life? I see it as the story of two roads. One seems very smooth and easy, but it's a dark road where you can blend in with society. There are no boundaries, no scruples. You could say what you want, do what you want. You could cut people off. You could run into them if you want. 
Be quick to judge others by the way they look, by the way they dress, act like them, be like them. It's so easy on that road. Dislike a person because they don't see things the same way you do. Don't care about your fellow human being or their feelings. Be a bully. Be selfish. It's all about me. It's all I want. Hold grudges. Have no integrity. Or we just don't care. We could call this road the worldly road. Or perhaps the Babylon road. Or the Sodom and Gomorrah road. Where we may hear, oh Moses, can't we just go back to Egypt where we had some food? and knew our place in society, I don't think this road has a pleasant end. Or how about the other road? It's a lot different looking. It's paved with a very smooth but firm foundation. Yes, it has its challenges. This is a road of rules. Don't do this, don't do that. It has boundaries. While you're on this road, don't text and drive. Don't communicate things that are not godly. People on this road, let other people merge and give them space. Give them plenty of room. They treat each other with respect. They don't care what you look like what you drive, what you wear, where you come from. They're friendly no matter what. Do you ever get a flat tire on this road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get stuck? Sure. But there's always someone on this road that knows what you're going through and can help you through it. This road is called the Red Sea Road the Mount Sinai Road, the Kingdom Road. This is the road of Yeshua HaMashiach. Every once in a while, these two roads may cross, perhaps at an overpass, where someone may throw a rock at you and hit your windshield, or shout mean words to you. But it doesn't matter. You know the road that you're on and you just keep cruising along. If some reason you take a wrong turn and find yourself on that other road, there's always a way back. Always a way back. Kind of think of it, you could bring somebody from that road with you. That's part of our mission, isn't it? Bring them back to the correct road. Since people are on that road because they chose to be there. Since coming to having a relationship with Yeshua, I feel that I am blessed in many ways, both physically and spiritually. I have been married to a wonderful woman who loves me for me for 20 years. I have a home. I have fiscal security in my life and stability. Most of all, I feel I am a part of a community that cares for one another. Folks that are on the same road for the kingdom of God. Are there any issues along the way? Yes. Have I made mistakes and have problems? Oh, yes. And I am sure there'll be more down the road. However, it's nothing like that road I used to be on. Nothing like it at all. Choosing life and being inscribed in the book of life takes our repentance of the sins we've committed both knowingly and unknowingly. We're human. We fall short from the glory of God. God gave us free will, so we are given that choice. 
Moses tells B'nai Yisrael their life will be full of choices, the blessings and the curses which are laid out before them. And he knew they were going to fail. He knew they were going to fail. But he encourages them to choose life, to follow Hashem and his Torah. Yeshua also encourages us in John 8, 12, where he says, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I say amen to that. I don't know how long my life will be, but I'm thankful for every day I have. And I believe that a relationship with Hashem through our Messiah Yeshua is the clear choice. It's the only choice. Yeshua is death to life. In front of us is the blessing or the curse. Having Yeshua is our death to life. Having him in my life and our lives gives us life in abundance. And I hope you too, this night, will choose life. Hashem Yeshua. Amen.